A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, with the train of his garment filled the temple. Seraphim were stationed above, each of them had six wings. With two they veiled their faces, with two they veiled their feet, and with two they hovered aloft. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, they cried one to the other. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember which he had taken with thongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See now that this has touched your lips. Your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. Ebum Domine. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry, and he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law was within my heart. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Your justice I kept not hid within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth in the vast assembly. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to visit every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I'm sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. 
into whatever house you enter, first say peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Verbum Domini. Lambs among the wolves. What does that look like today? It looks like this when so many of our young people, 18, 19, 20, they get confirmed, they leave your house, they go off to college, promptly stop going to mass, and eventually end up leaving the Catholic faith. Oh, and while they're at college, even at so-called Catholic institutions, your sons and daughters get their heads filled with intellectual garbage that is contrary to the richness, beauty, and truth of our faith. They are formed in moral relativism, political correctness, and values-neutral education that promote the very ideas that will ultimately erode the spiritual foundation upon which their faith is built, all in the name of tolerance and diversity and at the expense of authentic truth and freedom. <clears throat> Their faith becomes an antique. Now, I'm not much of a television watcher, but one of the shows that we do like to watch as a family from time to time is the Antiques Roadshow. And if you're familiar with that show, you know, people have these paintings or a vase or something that was handed down from the family through the generations or something they find in a dealer shop or something in the garbage and you know it's it's something that has some sentimental value to them and you know they may put it in a box to keep it away preserve it and take it out on special occasions family anniversaries easter christmas things like that but they really don't think much about it outside of those special occasions that is until the antiques roadshow roads in the town and so they take their furniture and they take their this this beautiful uh, sentimental item and they wait in line for hours and then they stand in front of the dealer and that's my favorite part because I'm wondering how does this person know so much about this object they know the era they know the 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 the, the creator of that item and they can tell you all about it and the person's like wow I, I didn't know that and then comes the kicker how much you think this is worth and usually they guess something far below what the value of that object is. And so they went there with something that just meant something to them, had sentimental value, but now they leave with a treasure. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be the antiques dealers in our culture today. What do I mean by that? What happens is, as I just mentioned, our young people leave your house and their faith becomes an antique, it goes up on the shelf. And you know when they pull that, that faith off the shelf? Christmas, Easter. You know, when they, oh, I remember. Christmas doesn't become about Jesus Christ coming into the world to save us. It becomes just a warm sentiment. Oh, I remember when we went to Mass and, oh, the incense. I remember what that was like. And I get this warm feeling in my heart and, whoa. And when they access that, that sacrament off, then they take it off the shelf and <laughs> dust it off. Give me some sacrament when they get married. And it goes back on the shelf again. And then when's the next time? Baby's coming. Baptism, off the shelf, <laughs> dust it off, more sacrament, back on the shelf again. We need to be the ones to explain that our Catholic faith is a treasure. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. 
Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest, into the culture of death. So what happens at the end of Mass, we just received our Lord Jesus Christ, body and blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. And I love these new endings that the deacon gets to say. Go and proclaim the gospel with your life. You know what I mean? Beautiful. We have to take Jesus, who we just received in the Eucharist, and become Eucharist to the world. We are the lambs going into the culture of death. Jesus says, if a man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses himself? So the key to evangelization is not programs or methods, however helpful and valuable they may be, but a true love of our Lord Jesus Christ and making the connection between the faith that we learn and the lived experience of that faith. One of the wonderful antiques dealers of his day, uh, dealers in the faith, of course, was St. Nicholas, whose uh, feast we celebrate today. Now, St. Nicholas lived in the fourth century and had a reputation for secret gift giving, such as putting coins in the shoes of those who left them out for him. And thus he became the model for Santa Claus, derived from the Dutch word for St. Nicholas, Sinterklaas. Obeying Jesus' words to sell what you own and give the money to the poor, St. Nicholas used his whole inheritance to assist the needy and the sick and the suffering. He dedicated his life to serving God and became known for his generosity to those in need. He loved children and he had a great affinity in his heart for sailors. In fact, he's the patron saint for children and sailors and folks like that. He was imprisoned for preaching the truth and later defended that truth at the Council of Nicaea. And through the centuries, many stories and legends have been told of St. Nicholas's life and deeds to help us understand his extraordinary character and why he is so beloved and revered as protector and helper of those in need. So inspired by his life and his work, we must be witnesses to the truth with our words, by our deeds and actions, and yes, by our very lives. We must not allow human sinfulness and weakness to become excuses for not participating in God's glorious plan of salvation. Jesus said, don't worry about money bags or sandals or anything else, because when you speak the truth in love, in my name, I will provide all that you need and no one will harm you. We must never forget that we are baptized into Christ's death and that we share in Christ's own cross and resurrection. We must never forget that through the sacraments, those seven special ways that God reaches out and touches us with his life, that we are strengthened by a God whose love makes a way out of no way. Jesus spoke the truth and they killed him. Sometimes we'll think about that. He told the truth and they killed him. And when we recognize, especially during this time of Advent, that the kingdom of God is at hand, then we will have the courage to speak out against the evils of abortion and euthanasia and cloning and fetal research and defend the basic right to life from conception until natural death. We will safeguard and promote family life by supporting monogamous marriage between a man and a woman and denounce contraception and cohabitation. When we believe with all of our hearts that the kingdom of God is at hand, we will protect the freedom and rights of parents regarding the education of their children. 
We will protect our youth from substance abuse and prostitution and all these other modern forms of slavery and reestablish the holy family as the model of family life. You know, Damon and Gloria and I were talking about this yesterday as we are doing our series. And we were talking about the family. You know, and the heart of the family truly is the mother. She is, in fact, we still say things today, she's the heart of the home, the heart of the family. Why? Because a woman is the monstrance, huh? Just like the Blessed Mother, she was the first monstrance, the first vessel that held within her womb, in the tabernacle of her womb, the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. And every woman, because she is a gift from God, has a special relationship with the Holy Spirit that we men will never understand or appreciate ever, even you brothers, you ain't gonna understand that. Why? Because with that gift of the Holy Spirit, a woman becomes a life bearer, a life giver. But yet our culture sees that as a sign of weakness. And they want women, they don't want women to, to, to see them as, uh, as these beautiful gifts of God's love and life. They want to turn women into men. We need to stand up and respect the dignity of our women, of our, our mothers, of our family. I'm thinking about this because uh, the, the fat, past few days I've been thinking about my mom. You know, she, I was here at EW10 when she died two years ago. And so, you know, I'm, I'm remembering her now because it's about this time of year that she passed. And the family is such a fragile thing. <laughs> but yet it's that family that forms our children to go out into the world. Yes, Catholic schools, those are important. Youth group, those are important. But those don't take the place of the family. They're supposed to train our young people to go out into the world, to know Jesus personally and intimately. That starts in the home. And we have to stand up and defend what God has given us. We have to defend what Jesus died for on the cross. We cannot be afraid. Yes, sometimes it's scary. You know, we're out in the trenches every day, and sometimes it's not pleasant. But Jesus says, don't worry about it. I got your back. Do your part, and I'll do mine. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, in a few moments, we will be strengthened by the body and blood, soul and divinity of God's dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who freely gives himself to us so that we can give ourselves to others. We, like St. Nicholas, as faithful servants of the truth, must not be afraid to respond to God's call out of a faith, hope, and love that conquers fear. And because of what Christ did for us on the cross, conquers death and gives us the courage to say, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Amen.